Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Michael and we're going to be continuing in the book of Acts today. Uh, we left off last time in chapter 18, so we'll go ahead and continue on here from chapter 19. Um, so give that a second for you to get all that together. Um, looking forward to it. We're almost done with the book of Acts and we'll be continuing on now with the book of Romans. Um, this is progressing quite nicely. I like how far we've come along. It's definitely been about... This is our fifth book reading. You really see the testament in regards to God's word. The walkthrough with Jesus Christ, his sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us, and the resurrection given, and then the discipleship that continued afterwards, spreading the word of God throughout the world. Um, it's definitely something that's needed today. I believe so more than ever. Um, as you take a look at the world especially in today within this month um, yeah it's definitely a civilization that is lacking God and lacking the fear of God or if we truly understood and the people out there truly understood what it means to have the fear of God we would have a completely different society a different world and we would act differently with one another but unfortunately, there are those that like to shun away. There are those that don't accept it and like to be put into their own works and their own ways. I used to be one of them, by all means. I have done a lot of horrible, bad things in my day, in my life. And since coming to Christ, you know, you can, you can see the changes. You can see the things that I used to do that I don't like doing any longer. If you knew me personally, obviously this would be something that you would see personally, but all I can do is give my testament in regards to how so my life has been changed. Um, he's alleviated me from so many different things now at the same time we're, we're human, you know, and we're born into sin, and that is something that's always going to be with us until we come to Christ in the world after. Um, when we're taken up into heaven for those of us who are truly saved and given their lives to Christ. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and quit rambling on here and I will just get right into it. So again, we're on chapter 19 in the book of Acts. Paul and Ephesus. And it happened what, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into that when into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about twelve men in all. And he entered the synagogue and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some, had, but when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew at them and he took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Verse 11, the sons of Sceva. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Then, come, then some of the interrent Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this, but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom it was the evil spirit leapt on them, mastered them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks. And fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also many of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices. 
and in a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. Verse 21, a riot at Ephesus. Now after these events, Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time there arose no little disturbance concerning the way, for a man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who had made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he, these he gathered together with the worksmen in similar trades, and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is a danger not only that this trade of ours may become into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be disposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was, filled with the, the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and, Aristoric, and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's companions in travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him, and even some of the Asiarchs who were friends of his, sent to him and who were urging him not to venture into the theater. Now some cried out one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, but Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had quitted, had quitted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis, and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash, for you have brought these men here who are, ne who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. If therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open. And there are proconsuls, let them bring charges against one another. But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly, for we, are for we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Verse 20, I mean, sorry, chapter 20. Paul in Macedonia and Greece. After the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he said farewell and departed for Macedonia. When he had gone through these regions, and they had given much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months, and when a plot had was made against him by the Jews as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Sopater the Barian, son of Pyrrhus, accompanied him, and the Thessalonians Astriarchus and Secundus, and the Gaius of Derby, and Timothy, and the Asians, Tychius and Trophimus, these went on ahead where they were meeting for those at, Tro at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days we came to them at, Tro at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. Verse 7. Eticus raised from the dead. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper rooms where we were gathered, and young men named Estichas, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. And being overcome by sleep, he fell down on the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down and bent over him, and taking him in his arms, said, Do not be alarmed, but for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until for daybreak, and so departed. And they took the youth away alive, and were 
not a little com and were not a little comforted. But going ahead to the ship, we set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul aboard them, for so he had arranged, intending himself to go by land. And when he met us at Assos, he took him on board and went to Medellin. And sailing from there, he came the following day opposite Chios. The next day we touched the Samos, and the day after we went to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so that he might not have to spend time in Asia. For he was hastening to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. Verse 17. Paul speaks to the Ephesian elders. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know that I have lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened in me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and affliction await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish every one with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I can vet it no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown that you by my working hard in this I have shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak and remember the words of the Je words of the Lord Jesus how he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive and when he had said these things he knelt down and prayed with them all and there was so much weeping on the part of all they embraced Paul and kissed him being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, and they would not see his face again, and they accompanied him to the ship. Chapter 21 Paul goes to Jerusalem. And when he had parted from them and set sail, he came by a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When he had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there, for there the ship was to unload its cargo. And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days, and through the Spirit they were telling Paul not to go to Jerusalem. When our days, were, when our days there were ended, we departed and went on our, our journey, and they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home. When he had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemus, and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. And on the next day we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with them. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we, were staring, while we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from the Judea. In coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there, there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. 
Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am not, for I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. After these days we got ready and went up to Jerusalem, and some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Men Manasseh of Cyprus, an elderly disciple with whom we, would, we should lodge. Verse 17, Paul visits James. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went, in with us to, Paul went with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one of the he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there were among the Jews of those who had who have believed. They are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you, and that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. But then is it but then is to be what then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do you do therefore what we tell you? We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses, so that they may shave their heads. Thus all we all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but what but that of you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what was, has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with them, and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled, and the offspring presented for each one of them. Verse 27, Paul arrested in the temple. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and have defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus and the Ephesian with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune, the, the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him, and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another, and as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the, bar into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd, for the mob of the people followed, crying out, Away with him. Verse 37. Spall peaks to the people. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian then, who recently stirred up a revolt and led the four thousand men of the assassins out into the wilderness? Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus and Cilicia. A citizen of no obscure city, I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hands to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, we'll go ahead and do 22, because I don't want to leave you guys on a cliffhanger, because it's getting good, as all always gets good. So chapter 2, and Paul's saying, Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make for before you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he had said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in the city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel. According to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day, are persecuted this way to the death. 
binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear witness, bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take also to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I had said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, and standing by me, said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know this will, to see the righteous one and to hear the voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to every one of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another I, am, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the gar garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Verse 22, Paul and the Roman Tribune. Up to this word they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging and to find out as why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I brought this citizenship for a large sum. I bought this citizenship for a large sum, Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. To those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had, and that he had bound him. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there. Like I said, I couldn't stop right at that portion of it. Um, and I do hope you guys all enjoy the reading and are getting filled with the Spirit in order to read the book on your own. Of course, if you are enjoying the videos, continue wanting to listen, I greatly appreciate it. Um, just want to praise God and give His Word and testimony to the people out there. Um, so with that, I will bid you guys all a good night. I love you. God bless you. And I will see you next time.